Sterling looking for their first points. Play action. Montez looking to his left. Flushed. Running to the near side. Trying to get the corner. Turns to the pylon. He dives. Is he in? Touchdown! Touchdown, Colorado! The redshirt senior scrambling to his left. Turn the corner in a foot race. He told He touched the pylon. Well, there was one of two touchdowns for the Colorado Buffaloes, but they fall 31-14 here at the Rose Bowl to UCLA. Drop their fifth in a row. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Buffalo Stampede. Voice of the bus, Mark Johnson, Coach Gary Barnett. I'm not sure what to say about this one. The, the offense came out and kind of laid an egg in this ball game. Defense gave pretty good effort and tried in this contest. Never got out of the blocks, Mark, yeah. uh, from the game time the game started. Uh, the first series for Colorado, they just had no energy. Uh, you know, they did not execute early on uh, defensively. Uh, it got immediately 17 points put on them right away. And before they even uh, put together a drive. And, and, you know, they just was low energy game, I thought. I thought that, uh, you know, it, it's very obvious the offense is underachieving at this point in time. I thought the defense played as hard as they could play. Yeah. You know, and I mean, it's a, it's a defense that's hung, hamstrung with injuries. But uh, they still played pretty hard. And special teams were... You know, overall disappointing tonight. So, yeah. you know, that's the kind of game it was. Buffaloes ended up missing two field goals by James Stefano, by the way. Buffs didn't have 300 yards of offense, didn't have 100 yards rushing in this ball game. That being said, Jaron Mangum had to play. Alex Fontenot did not play. He ran hard at times. There's a young sure player trying to make some plays. But he's played a lot this year. Yeah. You know? I mean, he, he should be ready to step in. I mean, losing Fontenot it hurts, but Jaron Mangum should be able to come in and play just as well as Alex Fontenot, if not better, because yeah. he's trying to prove himself. And I thought he played hard. I thought he, as a young guy getting his first chance to start, did did fine. But overall, team-wise, it was it was I think it was very disappointing from a fan standpoint, and I'm sure it's disappointing in the coaches eyes as well. Yeah, that defense, after giving up the 17 points in the first quarter, really limited the UCLA in the second quarter. In fact, the Bruins only had 33 yards of offense in that second quarter. And again, they're holding that thing together with the duct tape and bailing wire back there. and They're playing hard. Well, they are. And, uh, you know, there's there's not a lot of seniors, uh, just a few in there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's got to be disappointing for those guys. Yep. But uh, they are playing as hard as they can play. Well, the Buffaloes, we showed you a few weeks ago, they had the new suits when they were traveling. They walked into L.A. with a different look this week here in Pasadena. The shoes we're focusing on, you look classic in those shoes. Yeah, the, I went with a classic look. Just, you know, a bit of a boot look as well, so the pants can flow over the top. I tried to wear some kicks with them like the, the young boys, but uh, I can't I can't get away with that anymore, I don't think. But you're putting your own spin on it with the shoes. Tell me about the... All white J's with the suit, little swag, little drip. You know, I'm a basketball player too, so, you know, I had to bring out the J's. These are sick right here. I love this look you got going. Tell me about it. Just some simple, you know, simple dress shoes. Got the little rhinestones on them, make them sparkle a little bit. You know, got to have my own drip to them. It makes a difference, especially since we all have similar the suits, you know, some people got flooded pants, some people wear slides, sneakers, you know, you could dress it up, dress it down, depending on how you want to do it. I just got it because it kind of stands out. I got the white and black going on, and the red box is my favorite color, so I got it popping out. That's really what it is. And I think we're able to put our personality on it, and like, it just lets us show ourselves while also looking uniformed as a team. These, these are something else. Tell me about these. Something a little flashy, something a little different than everybody else. Some, some people got the black ones, some silver ones, but nothing like the black and gold mix that we got. I really Google searched them. I know people used to have prom shoes like this, some studded loafers, and these came up, caught my eye, had to get them. We get our own shoes or shirts or anything like that, jewelry. Try to have our own little style in some way, but still look unified. I got the Dior, Dior kicks, you know, I'm copying Dior kicks with the LV on the belt, you know what I'm saying? The drip is for real, severe. Look them up, they glow in the dark too. Well, you come back to California, you have to match the how with the shoes. These are just the Jordan 1, so I had to represent my California nature. All right, the new kicks here for the Buffaloes football team as they got kicked in this one, 31-14 and fall at the Rose Bowl to UCLA. You know, we're talking about the defense as we continue with uh, Coach Gary Barnett. Nate Lamon is a football playing Jesse. Man, he was flying around out there tonight. And, you know, he's been that way. He's been the most consistent player, I think, on our football team. Yeah. And uh, offense or defense. And he, he plays hard uh, every snap. He's always there. Uh, he got two sacks tonight. Uh, they decided to bring him on a rush a little bit more than they have. Normally he's the back there just to clean up, but he's uh, he's he's just a solid, solid, really good, active, sudden football player. Yep. First two sacks, by the way, of the season for Nate Lambert. 
All right, this is a challenge now for Mel Tucker, his first year as a head coach of the Buffaloes. Well, he's got some work to do. He does. You know, he's, he's, uh, the facts are he's got an underachieving offense. He's got a defense that's put together with bailing wire. Uh, and he's got a special teams group that's uh, faltering a little bit now. Yeah. So, you know, that's that's why they call you coach. Yeah. You know, and if there's no problems, there's no jobs. And so that's, right. that's what his job is right now, to yeah. figure out how to solve these problems. Yeah, this I've always said with coaches, you guys are half John Wooden and half uh, Dr. Phil at different times, right? <laughs> this is the Dr. Phil portion uh, for Mel Tucker. Yeah, absolutely. But you've got to, you, you know, you've got to look at it honestly and, assess where you are and what your issues are and then you got to come up with a solution then you got to be able to execute the solution so it's complicated it's hard stuff yeah and it's next week the buffaloes have got the stanford cardinal in fact uh, coming to folsom field it's hall of fame weekend somebody's going into the hall of fame by the way and also it's homecoming weekend for the buffaloes but the bus fall 31 14 to ucla here at the rose bowl coming up next in the stampede our silent reporter andy lindell is going to join us well there's a shot at the chunk play to brown Touchdown. There was one of the two touchdowns. That one by Tony Brown from Steven Montez. By the way, that one right there was the 60th of the career of Steven Montez. He ties up a loop now. And Cody Hawkins, a little bit hollow in a game like this. Buffalo's fall 31 14, but yet he's got the all time record now tied with those uh, two former Buffaloes, along with Andy Lindahl. He was in the sidelines for us here at the Rose Bowl. A disappointing ball game, uh, no matter how you slice and dice this one. Yeah, really tough because as we talked about coming into this, this was more of a defensive football or offensive football team talking about yeah. CU and Unfortunately, the offense just couldn't get it going tonight. I couldn't even really put my finger on as to why. And the defense really didn't play all that bad. Gave them some chances. Yeah. You don't make those momentum plays. You see how things change. They didn't make those tonight. Well, we came into this season talking about that offense. We knew the defense was going to have its issues. Young team. There was injuries that popped up early. But that offense was supposed to be consistent. And especially with a fifth-year senior quarterback. Even Steven Montez wasn't sharp in his ball. Game. No, he just looked off the whole time. And I worry about to borrow the line from... Uh, Sam Darnold, are you seeing ghosts at point? Because yeah. the rush was getting in there pretty quickly. Just a rough day all around in L.A. for CU. Yeah, undoubtedly. But that defensive side of the ball again, he was talking with Gary a little bit about it. That unit, no, no matter what they've had thrown at them this season, they continue to battle. Yeah, they do battle. And you got young guys playing and stepping up, and I think maybe even playing a little bit over their skis, if you will. Yeah. So that is good news. But now you'd like to see the offense do what you know they're capable of. How about Tyreek Luckett? He gets his first start out there. He was a wide receiver, of course, through camp. They make him a defensive back. All the injuries he was called upon. The young man went out there, made some plays, had yeah. a pass broken up in this game. They sent him on a blitz. Now, yeah. at one time, I do think he'll blame and get the sack because he showed his blitz a little bit early, and I think it got this, the UCLA defense paying attention to him. Lamon comes up the middle and gets the quarterback. Yeah, uh, they, this building is special, isn't it? The Rose Bowl? It is. It's a lot of fun to be here. You just sense the history, and uh, it, it's got to be, if you have a bucket list, this has got to be one of the stadiums you visit. Yeah, without question. Too bad it was kind of an underwhelming performance by the Buffaloes as they fall 31 to 14. You know, this week, the men's basketball team took off for China. And before they made that trip to take on Arizona State, next Friday, the Buffaloes got a little education in Chinese culture. This year, we get to go to China and experience um, a whole other culture. And you really got to appreciate things like that. I met with them for an hour and a half and talk to them about practical matters. I did some modern Chinese history very briefly just so they'd have an idea about context. We talked about things like money, social customs, how to eat with chopsticks and what to do and what not to do when they're eating and try to introduce them to the idea that China is not a scary place. It's a really wonderful place to visit. So sometimes what you may find offensive over here is something that they may do a lot over there or things that you might not find offensive like uh, for example putting your feet up uh, on like a couch or something in the lobby of a hotel that's frowned upon over there whereas like over here not many people would mind. Being more aware of just you know things that are a little bit different over there and just to be prepared for it. Just exposure yeah. to a place can really change people's misconceptions about it being a very scary place and I think they'll find out that most people are very welcoming, they're very friendly, and they'll be excited to meet American basketball players. We all have a strong a strong love for each other and moving that good time over to China is just gonna be a, a great experience, not only for the team but for all of our guys, a life lifelong experience. It kind of makes you sit back and think about all the opportunities that uh, playing playing basketball, especially here at the CU and prestigious D1 institution, and just kind of like where basketball can take you in life. When I was 20, I actually studied abroad. It changed my life. It opened doors that I never imagined. You know, the same thing could be true for some of these guys. 
Now, a little education for the men's basketball team. A lot of expectations and excitement around that team. They'll take on Arizona State on Friday night. It's a non-conference game, technically, as they'll play the Sun Devils in Beijing, China. As we continue to wrap up this 31-14 loss for the Buffaloes here at the Rose Bowl, we continue with sideline reporter Andy Lindell. Well, now it becomes really challenging for the head coach of the Buffaloes down the stretch of the season. Yeah, he had a good long talk with him in the locker room, and because of the unique access there, caught a little of it. Obviously not going to break any confidentiality there. Let's just say, though, he remained positive. You know, you think after a game like this, the tone would be very negative, very chewy, if you will. He got on him a little bit, but, I mean, again, Coach Tucker's very positive, and, and I continue to be impressed. He comes off to me as an old-school guy, but I'll tell you, as a young guy, you know, trying to coach a few – different sports myself yeah. it's amazing how he keeps it positive he's got a good way to relate to some of the younger athletes it's not just that old-fashioned uh, you know I'm gonna have all your heads <laughs> right. kind of thing going on in there he remains disciplined but but still keeps that sense of positivity yeah. and I, I like that I like that. here's the thing though about Mel that I thought on our post game on the Colorado Football Network I thought if you read between the lines he's reading the tea leaves with this team a little bit and is kind of making some decisions based on what's going to happen moving forward by the way guys are going to contribute, by the way they're going to play. I would agree, but but I loved his last thought to you. Mark, I've done this before. I've been around when we try to flip some things, and yeah. I've been around young teams, and I've been around young coaching staffs, and he knows it's going to take a minute. He's not yeah. impatient with the process. I don't think Rick George is going to be impatient with the process. I, I just like it. There's not, there's not a panic. There's still just this kind of calm stoicness about yeah. Mel that – I just think is the right thing at the right time right now. Now, ultimately, you know what? Proof will be in the pudding, but I liked what I saw after this tough loss. Well, the Buffaloes have got a homecoming game coming up on Saturday. They've got Stanford at Folsom Field. That's a 1 o'clock game. We'll hit the air at 11 a.m. with the Buffalo Stampede pregame show on the Colorado Football Network. Coming up next, it was a championship weekend for Mark Wetmore and the CU men's cross-country team. They won the Pac-12 title, and Joe Flecker brings home the individual medal. We'll talk with Joe coming up next here in the Stampede. Well, some great images for the Pac-12 championships this past weekend, of which this guy, Joe Klecker, is the individual titleist, and the Buffs bring the trophy back home. Voice of the Buffs, Mark Johnson, back in the Buffalo Stampede. Well, congratulations. That was awesome. Thank you. Yeah, now I find out you're the first, and this kind of surprised me considering all the championships that the Buffs have won, you're the first Colorado Buffalo to win the Pac-12 individual title. you got to take us through the race. I know it was a challenging race for you. Yeah, I mean, going into the race, we knew Stanford was going to be good. We knew Oregon was going to be good, as well as Washington and UCLA. And then on the individual side, we knew there were a lot of top-ranked individual athletes. So, mm -hmm. I mean, going in, I just wanted to kind of take control of the race and make them respond to me. And uh, by doing that, I think you kind of instill some fear in them and maybe make them doubt themselves throughout the race. Yeah, you did jump out early. Is that something you discussed with Mark Wetmore, or is that something you kind of felt early on and think maybe I should do? Um, yeah, Coach isn't really going to tell me to take the lead as early as I did ever, but um, I think being a fifth year, he kind of just trusts that I know how to race, and he's not really going to instruct me too much. So he just kind of said, whatever you do, just save a gear, be a little bit careful, because I think in years past I've had the tendency to be a little over aggressive and then um, the last kilometer not be able to close it out and win. So my kind of whole thought was, yeah, I want to be aggressive and be out there in the lead, but make sure when there's a K to go, I can pick it up and, you know, kick down the home stretch. So the Buffaloes, after had a great stretch of years, they're winning the Pac-12s with two-year hiatus, and now you've brought that trophy back home, and I know that means a lot to you. Yeah, I mean, going into this year, the coach said, care about the Pac-12 and the NCA and try not to care about anything else. Mm. Basically, today is the first, or Friday was the first day that, really mattered to the team and you know individual performance well, great stuff the individual champion and the conference team champion is at the university of colorado over the weekend the cu soccer team picked up a great victory over the university of washington nice win for danny sanchez and company um, <laughs> <laughs> um it was a great ball in by steph and i think it deflected off someone cam kept it alive i hit it with my left the first time it got deflected and then the second ball, I just try to hit it as hard as I can and keep it down, and it just went in the back of the net. Basically, we just had to keep playing for each other. We knew that the conditions were tough and the slick grass, and we really just fought for each other. Um, we had to be a little bit cleaner, I'd say, with our set pieces and really hitting those targets, and ultimately just the want and will to win, and I think we did that. Um, go celebrate the win yeah. in the hotel. <laughs> Probably get some food somewhere, but definitely celebrate. This was a huge win for us. 
Nice win by Danny Sanchez and the CU women's soccer team as they pick up that win over the Huskies. We continue with Joe Klecker talking cross-country, individual champion, and the team championship for the University of Colorado. I know there was that stretch here where this it seemed like that title was here at Colorado every year. That, that kind of built some pressure, didn't it, for you guys? I mean, the upper class when you got here used to talk about don't be the first class not to win that, didn't they? Yeah. Um, coming in here, yeah, they'd won six straight, so – they always said, you know, you don't want to be that team to lose it. And then we lost two years in a row to Stanford. And this being our, me and John and Justice's last year, and, you know, we're graduating. So we said we want to restart that streak and kind of set the, the standard for incoming freshmen and the, the younger guys that that's the goal every year is to win that title. And they brought it back home. So you can leave here with a, with a uh, good conscience, can't exactly. you? Exactly. <laughs> All right, coming up, you got the regionals coming up here in a little over a week in Salt Lake City. Give us a thought or two about that. Yeah, so I think we've done well enough this season already that we have a lot of the points that qualify you for nationals. So mm -hmm. hopefully we can go in there and maybe not race 100%, but go in there and run a pretty solid effort and get through to the NCA with using as little energy as possible since we have to run two 10Ks in eight days. Mm -hmm. What does that do then moving up from the 8 to the 10K once you get to this time of year? Yeah, so I think for some of us, us upperclassmen who have been here a while, it's not necessarily too hard because – we train quite a bit of mileage and we're you know ready for it but maybe for a freshman it could be a little bit harder since in high school they run 5k and now they're doubling the race distance in about a year hey, speaking of freshmen Kashawn Harrison has turned out to be such a great young runner for you guys uh, you're, you're real impressed with what the youngsters done yeah I mean I'm impressed with all of our freshmen this year but especially Austin and Kashawn who are who've made the you know the Pac-12 team uh, but yeah he's just been an incredibly hard worker and um, yeah Obviously, being top 10 at Pac-12 for freshmen is pretty good. All right. He's the Pac-12 champion this year. Joe Klecker, congratulations. Good luck at regionals. Thank you. All right. Coming up next here at the Stampede, we're going to talk with the athletic director. Some huge new legislation surrounding college athletics and how it's going to affect what happens moving forward. We'll talk with Rick George next. Career high with 22 kills. She hit 425 on 40 attacks. Alyssa Alcantara got the match winning point. Close out the fifth as Colorado fought their way to a full slate win, 3-2 over Arizona. Well, a great volleyball victory over Arizona at the CU Event Center. Back in the stampede, voice of the bus, Mark Johnson, along with Athletic Director Rick George. I want to get the uh, the boss on here because in the last couple of weeks, we've heard a lot about name, likeness, and image. It's really become kind of the buzz phrase in the NCAA. You're on the committee that's been talking about that. Board of Governors just voted unanimously last week that student-athletes are going to be able to make profits off of name, likeness, and image. What, what is this going to mean for college athletics? Well, look, I mean, we're still trying to figure that out. You yeah. know, the, the, the most important thing is we want to make sure it's fair and equitable across all institutions institutions and you know we want the recruiting to be fair and equitable sure. and so you know we're, we'll be in the process of looking and kind of building that out and what are the framework around it what are the principles what are what are some of the uh, priorities that um, you know we want to undertake and we'll make a final report to the board, board of governors in April you know being on that committee you're, you're really kind of breaking new ground here so I'd imagine you got to walk lightly and, and look for all of the unintended consequences of whatever the NCAA does. Yeah, we do. I mean, you know, that's the key thing is there's unintended consequences for everything. So mm -hmm. we've got to really uh, look hard at that. We've got to be thoughtful in, in our discussions about, you know, what does this look like when it's played out? You know, yeah. is it enforceable? Uh, can we put some compliance around it? I mean, it's going to be a, a challenge for us, but I think uh, at the end of the day, I think it'll be great for our student athletes, and I'm glad that the NCAA is moving in this direction. Yeah, I wonder about this, Rick. Is this just the first step in a long process? Because I can't imagine this is the end of where this is going to go. Well, no, look, we'll, over the next uh, four or five months, we'll look at and get feedback and, and, and some conferences. We'll start putting in proposals through the legislative cycle. I would say by uh, January of 21, and maybe implementation by August of 21 would be something to look at. Well, it's going to be an interesting kind of a new frontier we're talking about college athletics, really. Yeah, it is a new frontier, yeah. but, uh, you know, this is the next step. You know, we've been providing a lot of things for student athletes over the last five years. This is the next uh, big step for student athletes. You know, uh, speaking of getting things for student athletes, you had to see the work that Rick and the athletic department have done for the student athletes at the CU Event Center. In fact, let's take a look at the brand new volleyball locker room.
we all just screamed. We were just so excited because it's been such a long time coming. I mean, we went through our trip to China, so we were humbled for a little while being in the visitor's locker room. And so we're just super excited to have it. Super nice to meet. The area is amazing. Um, it's beautiful and clean. I really enjoy it. I'm super excited to have these last two months with it, but super excited to utilize it. I'm super thankful for all the donors and everyone's help with getting this and making this all possible. Um, it's truly amazing and it couldn't be done without the Buff Club and everyone else involved. Thank you so much. Boy, some great stuff there at the CU Event Center. I mean, that's, uh, let's see, men's basketball, volleyball, and lacrosse getting to locker rooms. Yeah, they, they have, and, and, and it looks great. I'm um, really excited about it. Really appreciate our donors stepping up and helping us do this. Uh, it was needed, uh, and um, it's going to be really good for them from a recruiting standpoint, but also serving our current student athletes. Yeah, outstanding. Good looking locker rooms here at the CU Event Center. Hey, speaking of good looking, how about that new championship trophy that Mark Wetmore is bringing back to the Pac 12? Yeah, I tell you what, the, the men ran great, and uh, Joe, uh, who you just heard, from you know had a great race and you know he goes out in front with about a mile to go and uh, or uh, two kilometers or whatever yeah, yeah. Uh, but he went out and really ran hard and the rest of the team you know we had five in the top 13 I mean that, that was impressive I mean what a dominating performance and hopefully we can carry that over to the NCAAs yeah and the women finished fourth in the Pac-12 championships now we're here in Los Angeles getting ready for a football game as we take this segment with Rick you're getting ready to head to China with the men's basketball team well I am but before I do that we also had a huge win against Washington you know, in that. soccer, soccer yeah. and that was yep. really important for them to beat a team like that on the road 21 ranked so that was exciting but yeah we're, we're heading to China and uh, looking forward to that and um, you know I'll get to see an exhibition game before I come back and celebrate our Hall of Fame class on Thursday. That's right we got that coming up next week that, that trip to China do you like what the Pac-12 has done with that? Yeah I think it's good you know it's a great cultural experience for our student athletes you know we have over a thousand students from China so it's good for us to have our brand in that marketplace and I think Arizona State feels the same way and you know it's interesting that we'll play that as a non-conference game yep. to kick off uh, the 2021 or the 19 and 20 yeah. 19 and 20 19 and 20 I'm getting it all confused <laughs> just wait till you get back after yeah. that uh, going across the date line exactly. on that trip it's gonna be quite a trip well good luck and safe travels yes thank you all right the athletic director of the University of Colorado he'll be joining the men's basketball team in China for that game against Arizona State as we put a wrap on this week's Buffalo Stampede on Voice of the Boss Mark Johnson We'll talk to you next time.